The first season of Andor is finally here, and Star Wars fans couldn't be happier seeing a fresh new take on the series that wasn't related to either the Jedi or the Skywalker sagas. Plus, even though the showrunner Tony Gilroy said he wasn't interested in adding any unnecessary fan service, he still managed to sprinkle in enough Easter eggs to keep us entertained. Let's take a look at some of them, shall we? Starting off with 5BBY, the opening of the very first episode is a reference of its own, with the title card noting the year as 5BBY. It's the first time in any Disney Plus Star Wars series that the year has been mentioned. Here, BBY stands for Before Battle of Yavin, meaning that the story of Andor starts five years before the events of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, and Rogue One, A Star Wars Story takes place. Next up is Cassian using an AWTK-85A. Cassian escapes Morlana 1 on a WTK-85A transport to avoid getting detected and is eventually tracked down by Cyril Karn. This transport made its first appearance back in The Force Awakens as the ship that leaves young Rey during her nightmare sequence. It makes another appearance in The Rise of Sky Walker. Let's not forget about Cassian's stuffed bantha either. When Marva Andor enters Cassian's childhood room, we can catch a brief look at a stuffed bantha toy. But this isn't even the first time we see such a plushie in the Star Wars universe as Chewbacca's son, Lumpy, also owns a nearly identical one in the holiday special episode of Star Wars. Moving on, we also saw a glimpse at some familiar looking Republic gunships. We get to see Cass's childhood in a series of flashbacks on Canari, right before the events of the Clone Wars. Marva eventually chooses to take Cassa along with her after realizing that Republic forces were closing in on them. Several LAATs, or Low Altitude Assault Transports, can be seen flying toward their location. Similar vessels were also originally seen during the Battle of Genosis in Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, and were also frequently featured in many episodes of The Clone Wars. Besides that, Caff and some of the other Star Wars drinks also made an appearance. The Star Wars universe has its own line of drinks, such as the renowned Blue Milk and Jabba Juice. We get a look at some of the common intergalactic drinks during the second episode, when Bix orders a cup of calf, the Star Wars equivalent of coffee, though the term had been originally coined by Peter M. Schweighofer in the short story Hasty Exit, it has since been brought into the modern canon with John Jackson Miller's novel A New Dawn back in 2014. Then there was also a reference to the Planet Fest. When Cassian has to hide his Canarian descent in order to conceal his identity, he pretends that he's actually from a planet called Fest. The official Rogue One sourcebook mentions that Fest once used to be a regional base for the Rebel Alliance but it has also made many appearances in the Legends stories. The planet can also be explored in the 1995 video game Star Wars Dark Forces, where we can see it containing an Imperial base. Also, we finally got to see the return of the Bayar Pistols. After Cassian and Luthen Rail get pinned down by some Primor officers in Reckoning, Cassian uses a K-16 Briar Pistol to defend himself. The pistol is another callback to some of the earlier Star Wars games where players could use the weapon during most of the Dark Forces' adventures. It has since been introduced in the modern canon, with the reboot of Star Wars Battlefront by the EA. Another easy to notice Easter egg was all the Separatist insignias. While Cassa explores the crashed spacecraft back on Canari, we see a few indications showing that the crew had all been officers from the Confederacy of Independent Systems. The Separatist insignia can be seen on one of the officers' uniforms. Marva also later mentions that Cassa's companions had killed a Republic officer, so maybe she had been keeping some secret from her young companion. Oh, and we also saw a Y Wing and a T 47 in a shipyard. While Cass Cassian escapes Morlana 1, we get to see some familiar starships in the distance. One of the ships is a Y-Wing, which first appeared in A New Hope during the Battle of Yavin. However, it was revealed in The Clone Wars that they had originally been created by the Galactic Republic to be used as bombers. There's also a T-16 Skyhopper present as well, a childhood favorite of Luke's. He even mentions that he used to bullseye Womp Rats in his T-16 as a youngling in A New Hope. Somebody call Intergalactic PETA because it looks like they have some competition. Plus, we can't forget the Z-47 speeder bike. Cassian and Luthen use one of these bad boys to escape from the Primor officers on their tail. These speeders first made an appearance in Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, after Luke and Leia pilot one to chase down the fleeing Imperial scouts. Just like the Y-Wing, Star Wars canon states that they had originally been created during the Clone Wars era. We can also see clones ride them in the Republic Commando games. Coming up, there's the Battle of Mimban. After engaging in a hyperspace jump with Rail in Episode 4, Cassian talks about his experience fighting in the Battle of Mimban. The planet of Mimban was first introduced introduced in an expanded universe novel by Alan Dean Foster, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, back in 1978. It also later appears in Solo, A Star Wars Story, when a young Han is seen fighting in one of the trenches. Up next are the Kyber Crystals. Looks like Mimban isn't the only connection to Splinters of the Mind's Eye. Rael gives Cassian a necklace with Kyber Crystal inlaid to pay for his involvement in the heist. These crystals are what lightsabers draw their powers from. Another Kyber Crystal necklace can also be seen in Rogue One when Jyn Erso had been gifted one by her father, Gala 
Raylan. Following up from the Crystals, there are the Rakatan invaders. After giving Cassie in the necklace, Rael mentions how the Crystals celebrated the uprising against the Rakatan invaders. The Rakatan are a race of amphibious aliens in the Knights of the Old Republic video game series that had vanquished many of the other alien species 30,000 years before the events of the Skywalker saga. Luthen Rael's gallery also contains many hidden references. While Mon Mothma meets up with Luthen Rael in his gallery, you can see many Easter eggs scattered across the room. Among some of the items are a set of armor once worn by Starkiller in The Force Unleashed, Plo Koon's breathing mask, a Twi'lek Kalakori, multiple holocrons, a tablet of the world between worlds from Rebels, and even Indiana Jones's iconic bullwhip. Well, it looks like that last one explains where Han's bloodline comes from. Moving on, the Scarif Project is also briefly mentioned. During the meeting of the Imperial Security Bureau, one of the members of the Council talks about a setback on an Imperial project on Scarif. In Rogue One, Scarif is revealed to be the site of the research facility housing the Death Star plants. It's also where Cassian meets his demise after the surface of the planet gets destroyed by the weapon of intergalactic destruction's laser. Now we have the iconic Blue Milk making an appearance. During Cyril Karn's awkward encounter with his mother, Edie, he's seen eating a bowl of cereal filled with blue milk. Luke drinks a similar blue liquid during Episode 4, A New Hope, on the Lars homestead. Though unlike Karn, he drinks it straight from the, um, source. You can even try some for yourself at the Galaxy's Edge Resort in Disney's Hollywood Studios, but unfortunately, those come pre-packed. After that, there was also a lot of Indiana Jones references. Looks like Luthen Rael has managed to gather quite a collection of artifacts in his humble little shop. Some of the new items that we get to see in the Axe Forgets include the Sankara Stones from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Looks like the Solo Jones theory line just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Up next, we have Skeen's tattoos. Cassian identifies some of the tattoos on Arvel Skeen's body, one of them being Cratehead. Though later revealed to be the name of an Imperial base, Crate Dragons are also canonical creatures that reside on planet Tatooine. Obi-Wan is seen recreating the sound of a Crate Dragon in order to scare the Tusken Raiders during A New Hope. And later on in The Mandalorian, the titular bounty hunter fights one in the premiere of Season 2. The other tattoo identified by Cassian reads, By the Hand, which may be a reference to the Emperor's Hands, a group of spies and assassins that once reported directly to the human generator, Emperor Palpatine. And finally, there are the KX security droids. Cassian is almost choked to death by one of these old-fashioned droids. Despite being among one of the Emperor's most lethal enforcers, we also know Cassian would later reprogram and befriend the K2SO before the events of Rogue One. That's a wrap for this video. How many of these Easter eggs did you manage to spot on your first look, and do you think we missed anything? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.